Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.77 and in this lesson we're going to talk about tapping into the otherwise untapped or overlooked form of sampling that we have access to inside of the digital audio workstation. When people get a new program, they're usually tempted to just jump into doing the most complex and extreme things they can possibly do to see, okay, how powerful is this instrument? Perhaps we'll drop in an XY effect, say, or XY instrument, and look at that. This is something new. I've never seen this before. And then go inside here, drop in a drum machine inside one of these drum pads. We decide, ah, why don't we put an instrument layer on here? Then inside of the instrument layer, you know, we layer up a bunch of polysynths and all this other stuff. And in my opinion, this really gets away from the fundamental goal that you should have when you're working on music, and that's to make music. Will there be times when you might want to set a chain up like this? Absolutely, but if you don't understand sound first and the more basic sort of functions that exist inside of a digital audio workstation, you can lose the plot real quick. So that's why at the beginning of this course, we really started by doing some very basics, keeping it simple, and uh, we've really built our way up to a point where now we've started to get a little bit more complex and we've been layering things and using instruments. But I want us to always kind of keep that in check and go back to some of the things we've done before. So this is going to be a pretty theoretical video. It's going to be a lot of review. But now that we've talked about sampling and different forms of th synthesis, I hope that you can put a lot of this stuff into perspective uh, in a different way than when we talked about this at the beginning of the course. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull in a track here. I know that it's 85 BPM. So I've gone ahead and changed my master tempo to 85 BPM, but I'm still going to have to stretch this track. And this is just going to be a review on stretching. I'll turn this into stretch HD. The reason I want to stretch this to my actual tempo is because if I'm working with a full track like this and I'm pulling out samples, I might also want to pull out like a loop, like a drum loop or something. And at that point I can change and mess around with the tempo. But first things first, let's actually sync this thing in before going any further. So if I look at this track here, it looks like this is our first real big beat here. And I can go and listen. It definitely sounds like that is the first beat of the track. So we're in stretch mode here. I'm just going to go ahead, hold shift, get myself right to the beginning of this drum hit. Double click, highlight it, right click it. I'm going to say start audio event here. Okay, so we lose the rest of our audio event, but that's okay for right now. I'll pull it back to the nine, but we could really pull this anywhere if we wanted. The reason I'm pulling it back to the nine is because if we're thinking that this track is in four, four time, which I know it is, then something like the nine is gonna be a point where a transition uh, is normally going to occur, right? So the one, the five, the nine, et cetera, going up. All right, so now we can listen back to this and we have our metronome on. We'll just turn down the track a bit. That sounds good. I'll go a bit later into the track. So this looks really, really good. That's like completely synced up. I'm just gonna go to the end of the track and we'll see what the last beat's doing. Uh, maybe we could move that a little, but it looks pretty good to me. I don't think I'm gonna mess with it too much. I'll show you guys a way you can also kind of check this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, another marker here at the end of the track. So when I pull this, that's going to now constitute the end. I can pull in the length of this audio event. And now I'm just going to pull this back to the beginning of the track. Okay, so that's now should be constituting like a one beat here in the track somewhere. Now I could play back from the beginning. We'll check it out. That sounds good to me. Let's just try a couple of loops. You can do these kind of just anywhere and see how it uh, plays through. So let's try 14 to 16 maybe. Oops. So that sounds real good. I can move this around to some different places.
And that actually sounds like a really good spot I might want to consider resampling and uh, messing around with. So I could like cut it up here, but at this point I don't think I want to do that. Uh, what I might do instead is go to our view and show cue markers. Double click here and just say resamp because I'll consider resampling from that point. All right, so what makes this really unique and special and different from what people had access to before is that I can now go in here and I can mess around with the tempo and we're gonna stay on beat, either if I'm messing with the tempo up here or if I'm messing with the tempo down there. And I'll just give you a couple examples of that. I screwed that up a little bit, but hopefully now <laughs> you hear what I'm talking about there. We can also kind of evoke more of an old school kind of vibe if we go to repitch down here. And now I could increase or decrease this tempo and it's also gonna change the pitch. And that's a great technique for like pulling out samples from songs you really like. And, uh, you know, they almost become unrecognizable because I could really slow this way down. So I could easily imagine like starting some kind of hip hop beat or something around one of these really slowed down loops. A little trick that might interest some of you is if you know you want to work at a BPM range, like if you want to be working at 85 for your beat or for whatever you're making, your track, when we pull this into repitch mode here, I probably am going to want to work at like a duration that I hope is going to line up with like an actual bar here. Uh, so if I pull this up, we'll see this kind of changing its length. I'll just go ahead and pull this out first. We also are not in loop mode, so I can increase or decrease this without worrying about cutting anything off or restarting. We'll see that there are certain places if we get this just right, and the obvious one is if we like double 85, so I pull this down to 85 here, and then multiply it by two, 170. We'll see that at we've lined up perfectly here with another beat. So that's gonna keep us being able to loop things, get things working. You can obviously do additional sub durations of that. My math is terrible, so I'd have to use a calculator to you know, figure out the split the difference between 85 and uh, 170, but those are just some ideas for you. Also, like we talked about in the last video, I could consider going in here and reversing this. Unfortunately, now we have some spot at the beginning. I can pull that back. So maybe I'm not really digging that too much, but I could uh, double this out another time. And maybe this will sound cooler. Maybe we could sound cooler if we put it straight as well. But now something we can do that's pretty unique and interesting is that if I want to change the pitch of this, right now I can't do that because we are in repitch mode. If I pull this up or down, It's not making any difference, but we could actually go and we could bounce this. Sure, prefader's fine. And when I bounce it, it's actually gonna put this into stretch mode, okay? So now once this thing finishes, it's probably gonna struggle. It's a pretty long file. I can go and I can actually change the pitch of this guy.
So I can do it down here. I can also do it from the clip editing window. So. You know, maybe there's like a loop in here that I'd want to use. That may not be the best starting point for our loop. We'll see. Now I'm hearing some clicks, but I could probably fix that if I just go in and slice this up. And we can see now when I click on this clip, I can add in a little crossfade at the start and at the end. If I'm still getting clicks that I don't like, I could actually specifically look in here and, whoops, I could actually probably take a stretch marker Pull this back and then see where the end of my loop is occurring. And let me do this. We'll do it the other way. Now let's take a listen, see if that fixed anything. So, I mean, we can go in here and really just start to manipulate and chop up these samples just from using things like the repitch mode and then bouncing things out, stretching them, pulling them in, whatever we want to do. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to come back with this track, how it was before, and we're going to get to a few more experiments. Okay, so we're back here. This is just the original track uh, stretched to its original tempo and everything else. Just wanted to show you a few other quick things you could maybe do. So let's say we did want to resample this particular portion. What I could do is I could go in here, cut this up, and then I can copy. And I can now paste this into our other view. We see it hasn't really consolidated anything. It's just saved that particular portion of the track, which is fine. You can actually pull this out and consolidate if you want. And then supposedly, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. If I pasted it in, it should just be that little loop playing from like one to two. If I can zoom it back over, there it was. <laughs> A little bit sensitive. And now if I wanna go into my clip launcher view, I could obviously do that and, um, or we can go to our mix view. And now we have that loop playing back and whatever you wanna do now, you could potentially do with this loop. So we have our little loop guy going in here. Maybe I want to chop this up further. I could go in here, I could take my slice tool Okay, this might be a good spot. Let's try this. We'll see if this works. Okay, so I need to definitely either loop this or I can actually just take this and create like a little 
rhythmic pattern with it. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. It's not really all that important. Okay, awesome. So now I could go in here and I could mess with the pitch of each of these individual clips at pure random. Got to make sure that I have this turned on into stretch mode first. Maybe we want to slightly change the pan on all of these guys just a little bit. And remember, you can add motion to these as well if you add a second point and then hold down option. And then we could go in and kind of play with some stretch points. If we wanted to do something different. So, I mean, these are just a few examples. There's really a million, a million things you can do. And that's what I want you to remember and experiment with. These are basic sampling principles. We have the ability to do looping in here. We have so much individual control that if we're smart in how we pick our samples, and unfortunately that's something that's kind of been forgotten in this modern age of making music. We don't dig through the crates anymore to find just that one little moment that we want to resample and repurpose into our tracks. Instead, we have sample packs with 8,000 kick drums, so we can just scroll through and find the one that kind of matches what we're looking for. When you do something like this, you realize like, oh my gosh, there's so many cool things I could do. Like I could take just this one track and completely rework it and repurpose it into something totally different without even having to reach for the sampler or any additional effects. Just my simple little sample controls here and the um, stretch parameters down here give me so much. And I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Again, this is all review, but I want this to be fresh in your heads. I want you to experiment with different techniques. And personally, I find a balance is what is most fulfilling for me. So I like to use some sampled stuff. I like to get in there and get really messy and dirty with instruments. But I want something organic, something more synthesized. But it's up to you. There are some people who are never going to find a purpose for doing this. And then there are others who are going to use it all the time. So just want to talk about tapping into the untapped sampler. Thank you so much for watching. And you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.